Auburn. So it's been a few days since we've uh, got any video. We are kind of sick for a couple days there. Anyways, what we've been working on when we can is we're getting all the foam, putting foam up in the uh, headers. You can see we've been foaming anywhere where wood started separating at all. Just running a little bit of foam in there. Uh, we've trued the trusses up. Did some bracing up in the trusses. We pulled our wire for all of our exterior lighting and all of our exterior outlets back to our switch leg or if it needed a home run like the head bolt and all the outside plugins, we made a home run back to the panel, which is way over here. The reason why we did that is because we are going to vapor barrier this and then we're gonna spray fiberglass insulation in the walls. Then we're gonna put two inches of, of Artec foam and then we're gonna strip that with inch and a half or two by fours. So we'll have an inch and a half airspace. That's where we're gonna run all of our electrical for all the interior outlets and the interior lights. We are also gonna strip the roof out with two buys. So we're doing that because we're hanging tin up there. And it gives us somewhere to run our wire. We should have hardly no vapor barrier penetrations. What you can see is anywhere we have wires coming back to the, to the light switch from our exterior lights, or like these are our outside recepts, they are coming back to the panel. What we did is we cut, or we drilled a hole at an angle through the top plate. So when we put our vapor barrier up the wall there, we'll just cut a little slit in it, and we'll be able to trim co around that or tape around it, and then our Wires then will run outside of the foam or inside the foam, I guess you should say, inside the building into the panel, which is mounted within the vapor barrier. So we'll have no vapor barrier penetrations, like I said, for our boxes or any of our electrical that we're gonna pull in here. So we may have a few that we have to punch through later. I got in and run for lights above doors Figure there's gonna be a penetration no matter what. So instead of wasting a ton of wire going all the way up and then poking through like we did right there and then back down, we just figured we'll, we'll have a few little penetrations here and there, but not very many. So that's where we're at. And hopefully we'll get this thing insulated here in a couple days. Okay, so here you can see our on the outside of the building here, we this is where we stubbed out for our soffit lights. We also got our yard light poked out. Where is that at? Can barely see it. Poked out right there. And over here, we poked out right here. Just like all the other ones that'll drop straight down to the switch that we're gonna put right here. Poked out. We're going to have a covered RV parking area here, so we, we poked out one wire for lights under the covered area, and then one wire will come over, and it'll be two yard lights that shine out this way towards our woodshed. And one other thing we're doing that's a little bit different here, because we're putting two inches of foam on the inside, I'm putting three and a half inch wide nailers in the corners. That way, when the foam is there, the two inches of foam, and then I, I'll have two inches of foam, and I'm still gonna have an inch and a half to be able to screw my, because I'm gonna fur it out with two bys to screw my 
two bys into this. Normally, we put some of the nailers in already. We didn't think about it early on, but normally you just got an inch and a half nailer like that. So the foam is gonna be out to here and you're gonna have to be trying to toenail in all these corners to try to find that nailer. So this is where we're putting the foam in. That gap right there. Every once in a while you can see a little bit of daylight through there. So that's, that's why I'm up here doing the foaming. Well, we just spent all day running around town. We picked up uh, 85 sheets of two inch foam. Some lumber for uh, our lofts, metal bestest or Excel chimney pipe for the stove pipe. The insulators were here today. I got the vapor barrier on the lid. Got their cloth. They're gonna be blowing in, blowing in these the wall and the ceiling. It's gonna to be total R35 in the walls with the foam is seven and three quarters, something like that, or almost eight. So it's gonna be right out of right out of R42 in the walls. I can't remember what they say they spray in the lid. I think it was R60. I, I'd have to check on that, I can't remember, but R42 in the walls. We're gonna get the stove pipe for the wood boiler right there. And I gotta get the stove pipe for the oil boiler right over here. Other than that, I gotta do a little bit of framing for them here so they can attach their vapor barrier between the shop and the scissor truss there. But other than that, it's uh, pretty much in their hands for now. Today they also dropped their windows off, or windows and doors. We went with three foot six big doors. So if you want to carry a cooler or something like that through, you can. That stuff right there is not cheap. That is 800 bucks. $400, $100 per foot. It's ridiculous. So the first thing we're gonna start with is the wood boiler stove pipe. We're gonna get that going right now. Okay, you can see we got the ceiling support mounted. Now, got the laser set up. We're gonna go up there and drill a hole in the roof so I can put the roof flashing on.
And the last thing that we got to do is we put this uh, collar up there around the pipe so that when we blow our insulation in, it does not get in that box. It stays off the uh, insulated pipe. So we got the four inch ABS vent through the roof. We also got the stove pipe for the boiler on this side done. Uh, we got the eight inch stove pipe on the back side for the wood boiler done. Uh, now we're gonna go in and we're gonna start stripping the garage. See if we can. All the insulators started blowing their uh, fiberglass in the walls today. Pretty cool. Getting an R35 out of these, out of an out of an eight inch wall. Where normally with bats you would get an R25. So it'd be a little, little bit more efficient going this route. What we're getting ready to do right now is I have a kitchen style exhaust vent. We're getting ready to figure out where we're gonna mount that thing. It's gonna go right up there in the corner, right above where the wood boiler is gonna sit, so suck any smoke out from that. Then we'll duck it over and I'll be able to have a hose reel somewhere so I can bring it out and <clears throat> kick the fan on while we're running snow machines. It's nasty out right now. Getting ready to go move something here in a couple days and a big snowstorm just blew in, which I guarantee it's snowing where we're at or where we're gonna be moving something calling for several inches actually all around us up in the hills anyways well the insulators got their uh, got all the walls in the garage sprayed in blown in they got the vapor bear up in the, on the walls we already stripped this lid out earlier last week so today, before I go to work, I'm on night shift again. Before I go to work, we're gonna, they got the vapor barrier up there, so we're gonna get it stripped, or start stripping it. We're going to do something in a couple of days, so if I can get this stripped out before I go, then they can blow that lid in while I'm going. Okay, well, we got it all stripped out. I'm going to work. The boys are gonna finish this last little piece all the way across. Now the insulators can have at it. When we come back, we'll all be done. When we come back from moose hunting. <laughs> 